Okay, now time to move on to part 3, but before we do that, just want to show you one more thing. And if you don't like the, the strength of the effect here of the displace modifier for our uh, displaced cube, you can always increase the strength for a stronger effect. You can see how it looks now. I'll just set it to 30. And you can also fiddle with the mid level here for some interesting results. And if you want uh, the displace modifier to move faster, and I'll hit play here just to take a look at how it moves at the moment. So if you want it to move faster, all you have to do is select the empty, move to the end frame, and then insert a keyframe for position, move the empty further away, and then insert a keyframe for position. And again, if you want the the displace modifier here to move a bit faster. Now I'll hit zero on my numeric keypad to switch to camera perspective view. And I'll also hit B for the select tool here and I'll select all my objects and hit M to move them to layer 3. OK, now layer 1 is empty again. And I'll hit Shift A to add mesh a plane. I'll hit Zemmer on my numeric keypad to switch to top author view and the Del key to frame my plane. And I'll hit S and X to scale it on the X axis at about here and I'll also hit tab to switch from object to edit mode and control tab for the mesh select mode and I'll click face. Now my face is selected and the plane only has one face and I'll hit the E key to extrude and right mouse button to cancel any movement for my extruded face and 7 for the top of view and I'll hit S to scale down my extruded face at about here. Okay. And I'll also hit S and Y to scale on the Y axis my face and move it at about here. Okay. Now I'll hit delete to delete the face. And since we've extruded and it just works that way, we have another face we have to delete. Right mouse button here and hit delete and select delete faces. OK. We got our frame here in place and let's zoom in a bit. I'll hit Ctrl R just to create a look cut here in the middle. So left mouse button and then right mouse button to place the look cut exactly in the middle. And let's add a couple more loop cuts. Ctrl R and the left mouse button and you can see the edge slide on the bottom left corner of my window here let's move our loop cut here at 0 0.7 and create another one control R another loop cut and set the edge slide to 0 0.7 for this one as well now now let's do this over here control R loop cut edge slide to 0 0.7 and control R loop cut and edge slide to 0 0.7. Now I'll do this for the uh, for the face here. Control R, R, excuse me, to set a loop cut in the middle of the object here, left and right mouse button, and Control R. Let's add two more loop cuts. Control R and set the edge slide to 0 0.7. Now again, Control R, another loop cut here, and another loop cut again, Control R, and the edge light is also set to 0 0.7. Now Tab key, or excuse me, Control Tab key to switch to, uh, to go to the Mesh Select mode menu and click Vertex. Now I'm going to select the top vertices here. I'll select one, two, and three. And let's move it to the bottom. And holding down the shift key, one, two, three. Now seven on my numeric keypad, and the del key to frame the frame. And I'll hit the S key to scale it on Y axis. And I'll scale it up at about here. And I'll also hit 
S and X to scale it on the X axis at about here. Now you can see how our frame looks. I'll hit the tab key to switch from uh, edit to object mode and I'll just add the white color again to this frame. Click here and click white to assign the white uh, material to this frame. And I'll hit shift A to add mesoplane. plane. I'll hit the S key to scale my plane down. Zoom in and scale it again. S to scale it down. At about here. And I'll now hit S and X to scale it on the X axis. At about there. Now I'm grabbing my plane. Hit the G key to grab it and moving it down. At about here. I'll also assign the white material to my plane here and I'll now move to the modifiers panel, click this little tool here and I'll add an array modifier. So for our array modifier here we won't be using the relative offset, deselected, but we'll be using the constant offset and as you can see we'll be, uh, we want our copies of the object or the clones to be uh, placed along the y-axis, so I'm going to set the y-value here from 0 to 5 or perhaps 10, ok, and all I have to do now is increase the count value, let's set it up to 19, alright, now zooming in a bit, I'll hit shift D to duplicate my plane and the array, and I'll hit X to move it on the X axis, move it in the center and I'll now hit the tab key to scale my object in edit mode so I won't be messing with the array here and again we're using constant offset so that won't be an issue but still let's shape our object in edit mode I'll hit S and Y to scale my new plane on Y axis Let's make it thin and S and X to make it wider and I think we're good here. Ok, now tab key to switch back to object mode and you can see what we got and time now for the tricky part, well not exactly tricky but you'll see, I'll hit shift A to add mesa plane. Now we have our plane in position, I'll hit the N key for the uh, tools here, for the transform here and what I want for my plane here is to keep the scaling to 1 at the moment. So what I'm going to do is hit the tab key to switch from, from object to edit mode and again if you hit the S key now to scale the object and just make sure that every vertex or, or every phase is selected for your object. So if I now hit the S key and scale it down, let's scale it down at about here and hit the tab key again to switch back to object mode, you can see that the scale is set to 1 although we have scaled our object down and that means that uh, when you scale your object or modify your object in edit mode it doesn't affect the actual scale here. Now tab key to go back to edit mode and I'll hit S and X to scale it on the X axis and I think we're good at about here ok and what I'm going to do now is select those two bottom vertices here and we can actually call them bottom because our uh, little display thing here is flat but if we, if we look at it through the camera you can see that those two uh, vertices here are in the bottom so I'm selecting them and hitting shift S for the snap menu and I'll just click cursor to select it now we've snapped our cursor here and I'll hit the tab key to switch from edit to object mode and I'll now move right here and click object and transform and we want the origin of the object to be placed where the 3D cursor is. Now let's click it 
and you can see this little orange dot here which means that the origin of the object is now placed where the vertices are now we've done that because uh, when we now hit the S key to scale this plane right here, this new plane now hit S and Y when we want to scale it on the Y axis you can see how it moves and that's exactly what we want for our little meter here so what I'm going to do now is set the uh, Y scaling to 0 0.5 okay and try to imagine this plane right here as a value for a while and as you can see at 0 0.5 it's half there at 1 is full and at, z and at 0 well pretty much there's nothing here so we set it to 0 0.5 just to take advantage of the way we're going to animate it later on now I'm also going to add the white material to this plane right here just click here and click white to assign the white material to this plane here and time for the animation and you could uh, as always hit the I key to insert the scaling animation and insert the keyframe and then move on and scale it on the Y axis move some frames scale it on the Y axis and then again hit the I key to insert another scaling keyframe but we've been through this uh, trouble here to create this plane as you see to create uh, to use a smarter way to animate our object so I'm splitting the 3D view here and I'm going to need a graph editor and I'll actually hit the I key to insert the scaling keyframe for my plane here and as you can see and I'm expanding the scaling here for the graph editor we have the X, Y and Z scale and we only need the Y scale so I'm selecting the X scale and hitting the delete key to delete it and the Z scale and hitting the delete key to delete this one as well now I'm selecting the Y scale and I'll also hit N on my numeric keypad on my keyboard excuse me for the properties here and as you can see the value for the Y axis is for this frame set to 0 0.5 and that is exactly what we want because what we're going to do now is click right here at the modifiers and click add modifier and select noise so what the noise does is that it uses the scale and the strength options here to get to generate some sort of noise for the y axis for our object and we've set the plane the uh, the Y to be at 0 0.5 because the noise is going up and down and therefore it's scaling our plane above and below the 0 0.5 value so you can see how it looks let's make it a bit smoother I'll increase the scale let's set it to 10 and I think I can also increase the strength let's set it to 1.5 and we'll see back to frame 1 and I'll hit play ok I think at 1.5 is a bit too, too strong because it goes uh, below let's set it to 1.2 let's see and I think it looks pretty nice ok now I'll decrease the scale a bit, set it to 8 and pretty much that concludes our little experiment here, our little part here I'll hit 7 and the del key on my numeric keypad to zoom in and as always we need to add some text, I'll hit shift A to add text and again I'm using the default blender font here let's see what we can do with it I'll call it WX now tab key and moving to the text options here first of all we want to center it and then we want to bring the size down let's set it to 0 0.1 and D and Y to move my text down okay now tab key 
to switch to edit mode and change my text a bit. Let's set it to THP5. Okay. Now top key. Just make it a bit smaller. Okay. And of course assign the white material to the text as well. So I'm hitting zero to switch to camera perspective view and I'll hit render to render an image and you can see how our little uh, device display here looks. I think it looks pretty nice. You can as always feel free to add some text, you know, add text and shapes. You have to keep some sort of balance here. You have to add shapes that move and we've seen such shapes at the previous parts and you have to uh, improvise and create your own parts. So I think this one is pretty much ready. We'll move on in part 4 in a while.